we do coaxial connectors, cable and cable assemblers. The breadth of applications is anything from telecoms to broadcast or sound engineers or planes and vehicle tracking, that sort of stuff. But we do the assembly work in the UK. Most components are made overseas. We struggle up in the UK. We juggle the import. We juggle the assembly work. We're dealing with customers all around the world. The main office is in the UK, south of England, and we have a branch office in Taipei and Taiwan. I'm one of three directors and one of them lives out there most of the time now. There are 28 staff, actually 31 if you include overseas as well. We chose Missive because primarily we knew what we were looking for. We wanted not emo, we wanted collaboration, coordination and process control, a process visibility. We loved a product called High Rise that gave us the ability to link in the threads from product design to production into our quality control bubble, the queries, sales orders, and product development as well. We loved it because you had a thread there. And then you could look at the thread either from the customer or the supplier, and it, and it was to do with topics and it was in one place and the emails were there with the comments and the linked documents and that sort of stuff as well. They just stopped doing it. That was, oh, 10 years ago. So the need for us was born by the fact that high rise, they stopped developing it. We'd moved away from just plain emails quite some time. The system we were using was pretty good. It was pretty good, but then it got disappointing and then it stopped. So in effect, we knew what we wanted. We couldn't find it until we found Missive. And Missive did that as a hybrid of emailing and communication in general, plus integration with other stuff. Bruce was looking for something and we saw lots of different email or a lot of them actually were project based. A lot of them are called CRM. They're driven by a contract record or a customer record and the email was integrated. Whereas it's the communication and the process and the coordination that's the key to everything. Bruce kept looking, just kept researching it. He came across some blog or something from Philly and found about Missive and then did a demo. And it was like, ah, oh, this is right. This is what I want. This isn't just email. This is a discussion thread. It wasn't particularly difficult to pick it up because we knew what we wanted. It makes it clearer less chance of miscommunication, misunderstanding, makes it quicker, makes it less clicks. You can follow it afterwards, makes it tie in with all the other processes because we're business to business. We don't do design as such, but we're working with design people so that you have these questions that follow through and you've got to be able to follow it both ways back and link in your factory's communications with your customer's communications and know who's doing what next. It's communication and coordination and the flow of information from start to finish. No, it wasn't, that wasn't hard at all. What was hard is not getting carried away with it and trying to do too much at once. We came from a place that knew what we wanted in terms of collaboration, visibility between teams, cooperation between teams, and being driven by the process, what the objective was, you know, who's doing what next and why. You've got your email inboxes on one side, you've got discussions, then you can go into it or not, drill into it or not. And then integration of that. If you're jumping from a basic email package, you're not going to have to learn a different language of like with anything things. You could almost have the choice of just replicating what you have. You could follow the contract. I mean, you wouldn't do it for long, but to start with, if you've got Xavier in accounts and he's very cautious, very conservative, I mean, very strict and he just wants simple emails, that's fine. Or you've got Philippe, the dramatic salesman that wants to push sales and wants to have process and, and integrate with pipe drive. He can work in missive as well. Just give him a different team. Give him lots of fancy rules to do things with labels and stuff. Whereas Xavier's over there, he's just got an inbox. He's fine. But at the same time, if Xavier's doing something and Philip wants to see about it because it's a new customer, do they pay their bills? I'm going to start a project with them. Are they worth talking to? Am I wasting my time? We have team inboxes. We have sales. We have admin. We have accounts. Payroll, IT, production, packaging, quality. So quite a few teams. People are in the teams, so it comes into their inbox or they monitor their inbox or they have the stack of inboxes that you monitor. Or you can have pins somewhere down the team inboxes to show. You assign 
is the key trigger to know who's doing what next, who's responsible for carrying that forward. So you'll be in a team and then you'll be assigned. Uh, most of the teams have everybody in it. What defines it primarily as the sales team or the admin team is the active people in the team. So when it comes into the sales team, it's the sales people that are active. So they see it in their inbox, but I can see it at the same time. I don't want to see sales. I'm busy. They don't want to see admin, but for example, somebody might come into the sales inbox and with a remittance advice, paying us money. They just, they sign it to admin. We get stuff coming into admin because it goes out on the invoice, a request to update a sales schedule. Now, if it happens a lot, of course, we write a rule. But I thought we don't want rules proliferating just for one particular customer because the way they do it, it's easy. You just go sales or for example, um, if there's a credit control issue that the accounts team need to be seeing, and there's a lot of overlap with accounts, the team's the same actually, but you do different things with it. Everybody multitask as in multiple teams, but when you're in the sales team, you have a have sales hat on and you're doing a certain thing. So the processes follow different routes. And the expectation of the other team members in that is for something to serve as the customer in the sales box. The team actually is a more traditional name of the sales department, but it doesn't mean department. It means the sales process, customer support process. We use rules, your rules are like filters on steroids. You're doing conditions and then you can do things with them. So anything you can do with a click, you can do with a rule as well. If you want to assign, if you want to label. If you want to change your label, if you want to change an assignment, if you want to put a comment in there, all those things are much more, you can just do that by a triggered event or a triggered something, which is way beyond your email client, isn't it? There will be some things which are picked up and labeled. Our non-conformances have a process of being labeled and assigned, and that can automatically assign, or it'll automatically put a comment in there or automatically label it. Assignment is important to us, but a lot of things around labels and comments. That's more automated than the signing. We have a shed load of labels and rules as well for labels changing or something happening when a process is done. Many of us have our own personal rules as well. There's the rules which work when, because missive works in a completely private way with your private email account. And you have your own rules that you don't share with anybody else, or it can work within a team, which can be either related to your email address or a rule can put it into the team. We've got 143 rules. In company wide ones, maybe 20% are process flow, another 30% are ownership. So assigned to, assigned to, and the majority of the user actions to actually do something. And what we usually do, certainly with the sales, marketing, product control, product development, is if you do an action, it should be absolutely obvious what you've done, who's done it, and what they expect to achieve. Quite often, just a basic line is automatically put in there. It makes it absolutely obvious because you're scrolling through stuff. Oh, that's common. And it'd be done. You've added features without adding clutter. And you have a lot of features now, but it's not like a Microsoft product, which has 50,000 features of which you only lose 200. We picked up Missive. It satisfied what we were looking for. We were hungry for this collaboration between production, between purchasing, between sales, between admin. So yeah, it helps. If you're coming to Missive, from just a Gmail inbox and Gmail is really good or just a pop three mailbox, it will change your business. If you're interested in coordinating with a team, even in the same room, because people go on holiday, people are sick. I think if there's more than one of you in the business, uh, you'll benefit from it. You've got to have people that are frustrated with their inbox, which is most people, but they just grind on and think, oh, it's just the way it is. I'll come home from holiday and there'll be 500 emails. Well, not necessary because your colleagues, your teams can see it and they'll assign it to themselves and they just sign the ones that, or at you in it. So you can comment. You don't have to go, you know, for two hours when you're first morning back, you've done no work at all and you've got no idea what's important either.